Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel Noor Networks. In this tutorial, we will see how to configure threat protection policy and apply it to the endpoints on which you have installed Sophos endpoint agent. In our earlier tutorial of this series, if you remember, we have installed Sophos endpoint agent in two of our machines. So before we begin with the threat protection policy, let's see which are the default policies being there. Let's have a quick overview and then we will be proceeding to the configuration of the threat protection policies. Moving on to the endpoint protection from here. Go to computers over here to check the status and the policies of the computer. Let's take one of the PCs. Let's say that we will be taking this first computer. Click on this. Over here you will see the summary of the so forth and point agent for this particular computer. You will see what all are the events generated. Uh, till now you can see the generated events are like update succeeded, uh, the new computer is registered and so on. Uh, moving on, the third tab it will show you the status if there is any potentially unwanted application that is PUA installed or if there is any kind of service that is not working or let's say if there is any kind of file or which is malicious or so forth has detected as malicious and if you need any further action or if there is any alert generated if you uh, the so forth has although resolved that particular issue but it need to be acknowledged then all these things will be shown under alerts and the last tab if you will see over here you have policies as you can see by default till now we haven't configured any policy now we have applied any policy to the endpoints but over here you will see the base policies are applied what are base policies moving on to the policies i will explain you what is the base policy basically over here go to policies because anyhow we will be configuring the threat protection policy also from here if you will see in policies you will see a pre-configured templates of all the policies whether it is threat protection peripheral control application control dlp web control update management or windows firewall so these are the pre-configured templates so if you install sofos endpoint agent in any of your machine uh, you will find that by default these base policies are applied since we are Seeing threat protection policy in this tutorial, let's click on this, the base policy and let's see what exactly it is. Over here you will find four tabs, the users and computers, to which all users and computers this policy is applied and it is saying that base policy is a default for all users as I told you and computers, it will be used when there is no other policy assigned. So by default this policy will be assigned. If it is assigned to group, it is also saying that if any of the group is not assigned a policy in that case, the base policy will be assigned to all those users and computers in that particular group. The setting is exactly the place where you will be playing with the configuration, whatever changes you want to do. If you will see a pre-configured template that is for the base policy threat protection is a name. Uh, over here you will see that uh, these are the default configuration of base policy for threat protection. Although you can see that all the parameters are being enabled, uh, the setting is uh, Use recommended settings, the live protection, scanning, downloading a file scan, and all these things are all though there. Uh, additionally, you will see that detecting the low reputation file, it is saying that action to take on low reputation download prompt user reputation level is recommended. This, are this, uh, this is a basically a uh, configured template, but at the same time, you will see that uh, over here, device isolation, schedule scanning, all these things are not available. Anyhow, this was just to show you. Uh, now we actually we will be configuring a policy just uh, let's look on the last step before we proceed policy enforced over here they saying that the base policy is enforced and cannot be bypassed okay just move on from here this was basically to show you what is the base policy what are things are being pre-configured let's click on add policy now over here we will be actually creating our threat protection policy we will be configuring our threat protection policy click on add policy over here to create a policy now it is saying which feature you want to configure just uh, drag down from here and select threat protection because we are going to configure threat protection policy click on threat protection over here it is saying you whether this policy you want to apply on the user or you want to apply on the devices guys now you uh, over here you have to decide like see threat protection is basically you want to defend 
against each and every threat. So it is highly recommended that when you are configuring a threat prediction, you should not configure on the user basis. You should always configure this on the device basis. So click on device because threat protection, uh, like when we will be configuring a web control policy or a peripheral control policy over there, yes, it is understood that maybe like a administrator user is trying to access on that particular computer and want to copy some file or like, let's say uh, he or she want to uh, administrator user want to access a uh, certain websites, but at the same time, the other user who are accessing don't want to use at that time, we can say that, yes, we can define a user based policy for a web control or for a peripheral control but when we talk about threat protection policy you should always select device uh, you should be configuring the policy over a device okay click on continue over here now this is a template being ready for you the very first thing you have to give is a policy name let's give the name you can give any name i will say lab threat protection Then over here it is asking on which all computer you want to apply this particular policy. So we will say I want to apply this policy on both these computers. See this is one of the options and uh, if you go to group over here then it will ask you that which group you want to apply this. If you remember in our earlier tutorial when we were looking after the groups uh, over there we have created a group. So either of the way either you can apply a particular policy on uh, certain computers or if you have grouped those computers like let's say for example you have 100 of computers in your organization so searching one by one a computer over here on which you have to apply the policy it is better that you create a group and you add all those computers in one group where you want to apply a symmetric policy so instead of going to computer we will be looking after going to group over here so what i'm going to do is i will select on lab pc and i will just drag it over here to assign the policy on this particular pc so this is the first step what we have done instead of assigning a policy on a certain computer we have assigned uh, this policy to a group next step we will move and we'll say setting now if you will see over here by default it is saying that use a recommended setting let's uh, have understanding one by one if you go for with the recommended setting, what all options are available for you? Uh, it has turned on the life protection over here. So this feature basically helps you for uh, life protection where each and every uh, data or you can say a file coming will be sent to a SOPOS lab online and it will be scanned and given back to you. Then comes the leap, uh, deep learning over here basically as you know a traditional way where uh, deep learning is done by any of the antivirus solution the similar is for the sophos as well it will it has enabled a deep learning in the recommended setting real-time scanning over here uh, it has enabled a remote uh, enable uh, real-time scanning for you over here in the default re uh, recommended setting then moving on real-time scanning for the internet it will scan the download in progress block the access to malicious websites detect low reputation files and the, the, coming to the remediation part automatically clean up the malware and enable the threat graph creation so uh, guys over here basically what it is doing is like uh, if you uh, have checked the recommended setting i mean if you have kept the setting as recommended which is uh, definitely a good practice also so what will happen over here uh, the runtime protection and all these features will be available so what i will suggest is it is good practice to keep a recommended setting because you go in with the setting there is a high probability you will be safe from the false positive results as well uh, if you will see for the detect low reputation file it is saying that action to take on low reputation download if it is a low reputation just simply prompt the user that uh, you uh, you are trying to download some suspicious uh, or malicious file reputation level is recommended just let's see what are the other options it is strict and so on let me uncheck this recommended setting over here and you will see the option strict. If you go with the strict, there is a high possibility that you may face a false positive results, a genuine uh, files and everything may also be blocked. So just keep the recommended setting where the preparation level is also recommended and all this setting is good enough for your organization also. Uh, the ransomware protection, everything is being enabled for you if you can see on the screen. And then 
again moving on what you have to do ssl tls dec uh, description of https website so guys uh, over here moreover you are doing https inspection on your firewall as you have seen in the software sg firewall series uh, about the https inspection so over here we won't be doing if you wish to do you can do but it is highly recommended that you uh, we use a firewall for the https inspection device isolation is one of the interesting things over here. as we have seen in the alerts the alerts are low alerts medium alerts and high alerts so guys when it is a low alert or a medium alert you will see that the low alert is gray uh, whereas the medium alert when we talk about uh, like let's say for example some potentially unwanted application is installed or uh, like uh, let's say some firewall uh, gateway is down which is being synchronized with the sofo central uh, sofo central solution over here you will see that the yellow color will come yellow color alert will come but at the same time there are certain alerts like let's say for example some malicious website uh, is being reached or some malicious content is being downloaded in that case there is a high possibility that the device may go to the red status over there in the alert it will be shown as a red status so a device isolation is nothing like but it is saying whenever there is a high kind of risk uh, just isolate this computer so what you have to do is you have to turn on this uh, option over here and you will uh, basically what it will happen uh, it will be isolated the computer any computer which is going to the red health will be automatically isolated from your network so this option you can keep enable and uh, definitely it will help you whenever the status of any of the computer is going red it will be isolated from your network so the, uh, like let's say for example if some malicious content is being downloaded and there is a possibility of some infection to spread this will this option will help you to prevent from the infection to spread in your network then moving on schedule scanning you can just enable uh, this option from here and you can schedule the scan on a weekly basis or a daily basis so let's let's say for example you will say that enable the schedule scan and when you want to schedule the scan so you will say every day at 9 pm then you will say sunday monday so all day you will select if you want to and it is a highly recommended practice also that you keep a scan on the daily basis and then it is asking you for the option that enable deep scanning uh, where it will scan for the zip file cab and etc so you should enable this as well uh, enable deep scanning exclusion if uh, there is any kind of file uh, that needs to be excluded there is a possibility uh, like there might be a genuine file but due to n number of reasons it might be getting blocked from the scanning in that case what you can do is you will simply add a click on the add exclusion now there is no file being blocked but if there is certain file being blocked it will be definitely shown over here and what you have to do is you will simply add this uh, so that in future it won't be uh, block or it may it won't be alerted for uh, the scanning so just i will show you an example like uh, let's say for example you click on add exclusion there might be a explore uh, exploit uh, mitigation for example uh, there is a possibility that any of the application might be producing some false uh, false positive results okay or as you let's say detected exploits for example uh, in this case there might be like a excel file or some file that might be a genuine file but it is getting blocked so simply it will be shown over here in this area and you will uh, click on that particular file and you will exclude that from the scanning so this is how you can add the exclusion the last uh, option in the protection policy is stop messaging so like whenever any kind of action is taken by this policy to any of the uh, workstation any of the endpoint uh, you can just write a message over here that will be displayed on the endpoint on the end user's computer so like let's say for example uh, you can configure a message that's saying this is blocked due to threat protection policy of your organization so guys what will happen over here is like whenever any kind of action is being taken by this particular policy uh, this message will be displayed to the user so now you have configured the policy you have assigned the computers uh, I, I mean uh, the group to this particular policy and last it is policy enforced what you have to do is by default you will see that it is on which means the policy will be enforced 
and then automatically disable policy at this specific time if you want to disable this particular policy at particular specific time that you can schedule it over here and at last we will save this policy over here you will see that uh, the policy is being created lab threat protection and uh, instead of and it is assigned to a computer not to a user it is assigned to a computer and not to a certain computers but to a group if you will see over here to one of the group it is being assigned over here let's move on to the computer and let's see the policy we'll go to this computer over here and then going to policies over here this particular computer is in the uh, let me show you the first the group go to summary over here and you will see that this particular computer is in the lab PC group. So since we have assigned a policy for lab PC, this computer will be enforced with that particular policy. You will see that threat protection policy over here, endpoint protection, threat protection device it is assigned to device and with the policy name is lab threat protection. Similarly, if you will see on another computer over here also, in the summary part, you will see that it is assigned to a group lab PC and going to the policies over here, the enforced policy is this one lab threat protection so guys this is how you will be configuring a threat protection policy with several parameters or you can keep the re default setting as a recommended setting you can uh, from here you can enable a schedule or you can say that you will enable a schedule scan uh, you can define a message which you need to be uh, seen by the user if any kind of action is being taken by this policy and we have seen that uh, we can assign this policy to a user or, or a computer or a device additionally you can enforce this policy to a certain computers or to a, a group certain groups you can say and finally you can see that how you will uh, we have seen that how we will be applying this policy how this policy take effect on the certain computers or a group of computers so that's all about the threat protection policy Thanks for watching my video. If you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please subscribe and do share with your friends. Thanks and see you in the next tutorial.